Today on The Hookup, I'm gonna take these eight POE security cameras and put them through their paces to tell you which one is the best by far. Spoiler alert, it's this one. Straight to the point, the best all-around camera that I tested was hands down the RioLink RLC 410. Stick around to see why, but if you're in a hurry, I can assure you that you won't be disappointed if you choose the RioLink. Let me start off by saying that all of these cameras are nice and so much better than the analog security cameras that I upgraded from. But the purpose of this video is to determine which of these popular cameras under $150 is the best. I selected these cameras based on Amazon ratings for wired IP cameras and recent Reddit and forum posts where users gave suggestions for the best PoE security cameras to buy. I specifically won't be covering some popular brands like Wise, Nest, Neo, Blink, and Ring since I was specifically only interested in wired PoE cameras. Wireless is fine for non-critical devices, but in an application like a security camera, it's way too easy for bad people to de-auth a Wi-Fi camera during a crime, and if the only recording option is the cloud, there's gonna be no record of that incident at all. With that out of the way, here's the lineup ordered by price. The most inexpensive camera on the list was the HFWS 5MP, a $50 5 megapixel camera that bears the Amazon Choice label, albeit for HFWS, and it has 4.3 stars for its reviews. Next, for just $5 more, is the RioLink RLC 410, which boasts 5 megapixels and has that Amazon Choice tag. Third is a Tuya-based camera that sells for $47, but I unfortunately didn't realize that it isn't a true PoE camera out of the box. So in order to make it PoE, I had to buy one of these 802.3 AF PoE adapters for $8, which made its total cost $55. Next is one of the most highly recommended cameras on CCTV forums, the Dehua HDW46, which I picked up for $74. This one is six megapixel, which is the highest advertised resolution of any of the cameras that I tested. Just above that for $76 is the Unify G3 Flex, which is compatible with the Unify Protect NVR software, but it does have limited outdoor usage since it isn't 100% weatherproof. Then from there, it's the $80 Amcrest IP4M, which is the most reviewed camera that I tested with 135 reviews with an average of 4.2 stars. No IP camera review would be complete without testing the de facto biggest name in IP PoE cameras, Hikvision. I tested a four megapixel 2.8 millimeter lens turret version of this that retails for $110. And the most expensive camera in my test lineup was the Unify G3 Bullet, an all-weather outdoor camera that works with the Unify Protect system and will cost you $130 on Amazon. In order to rank them fairly on price, I made the lowest price rank one and the highest price rank eight, but then I used a mapping function to determine the price ranking for each camera, which made a lot more sense to me than just scoring them one through eight. For my first test, I set up each of these cameras in the exact same position on my garage, and I did my best to aim them with a constant reference point. That's that white PVC pipe that you can see in the bottom left corner. When you buy a camera, it will often list the lens focal length in millimeters. And theoretically, the lower the focal length, the larger the field of view. But I found that that doesn't always work out in practice. Here are the listed focal lengths of all the cameras that I tested. So according to this, the Dehua, the Amcrest, and the Hikvision should have the largest field of view. In practice, while it mostly followed this expected trend, some cameras with the same focal length performed very differently from each other. In my test, the Amcrest bullet camera had the largest field of view with a 2.8 millimeter focal length, followed very closely by the Hikvision. But the Dehua, which also has the 2.8 millimeter focal length, had a significantly narrower field of view. From there, the next highest field of view was the HFWS camera, which supposedly has a four millimeter focal length, but it outperformed all of the 3.6 millimeter focal length cameras. Ranking fifth was the Tuya camera from Zemismart, and then the RioLink. And then not even close to that in the competition were the two Unify cameras, which are both significantly zoomed in and have a low field of view, despite their advertised 3.6 millimeter focal lengths. It's true that field of view may be something that you would select based on the use case of your camera, because in theory, a narrower field of view is going to give you a better clarity for the part of the image that you can actually see. But again, in practice, that isn't really the case. The same goes for the megapixel rating or resolution of each camera. You'd think that more pixels would equate to more clarity, but here's what I found. 
In order to determine a clarity score, I held up a box with some 150 point text and marked off 10 feet, 25 feet, and 50 feet locations on the ground. It should be noted that the Unify cameras had such a low field of view that they couldn't actually see the sign at 25 or 50 feet based on how the cameras were aimed, but I was able to get samples of the image close to 25 and 50 feet, so I used those in the comparison. For the daytime results at 25 feet, all the cameras were able to produce a mostly legible image of the 150 point font, but the real link came out on top. None of the cameras were able to produce a legible image of the 72 point font from 25 feet. At 50 feet, the results were similar, but this time the Unify G3 produced the clearest image with its zoomed in lens. Although it should be noted that this image was likely taken around 45 feet rather than 50 feet because the 50 foot mark was out of frame for the G3. After the G3, the real link produced the only other image that was maybe legible, and the worst performer in this category by far was the Tuya camera that failed to even correctly reproduce the shape of the box. Overall, in the daytime clarity category, I'm going to rank real link first, followed closely by the Dehua and the Hikvision. For the nighttime test, I compared the images of each camera at 25 feet, and while performing this test, I didn't worry as much about being able to compare the field of view of each camera. But instead, I wanted the IR LEDs from each camera to be pointed straight at the locations where I would be standing for my tests. Similar to the daytime tests, the clarity of the real link was unmatched, followed by the Dehua and then the G3 Flex, which is actually the cheaper of the two Unify cameras. One strange thing that happened during this test was that the Hikvision's night mode wasn't triggered due to the ambient light that was being provided by my neighbor's porch light. After installing the Hikvision in my backyard, I've noticed the same type of behavior, where it goes into a low light mode before actually turning on its IR LEDs and switching to night mode. This sensitivity is configurable through the web interface, but it comes set to 2 from the factory, which in my experience seemed to be too low, or actually too high since I later discovered that the lower numbers make it more likely to switch to night vision. I currently have it set to 1, and it still switches to night vision a little later than I'd expect it to. On that note, I should probably mention that most of these cameras have pretty extensive setup options that can be used to tweak the picture by adjusting things like hue, brightness, contrast, sharpness, white balance, noise reduction, and a bunch of other miscellaneous settings. But since the vast majority of users will never touch these settings, I decided to test these cameras straight out of the box. That being said, the Reolink, Amcrest, Hikvision, and Dehua all had a similarly high level of adjustment settings, while the Unify camera in standalone mode and the Tuya camera lacked any advanced control. When logging into the web interface, most of these cameras are going to want you to use Internet Explorer with ActiveX plugins. The HFWS was the worst offender as it required Internet Explorer to even load the login screen properly. But the Amcrest, Dehua, and Hikvision will allow for adjusting of settings in Chrome, but they'll only give you a live image preview when using Internet Explorer. The Reolink and the Unify cameras, on the other hand, work perfectly in Chrome and don't require any strange plugins or downloads. Speaking of strange downloads, the Dehua, Hikvision, and HFWS cameras all come with static IP addresses from the factory, and that's on the 192.168.1.1 subnet, meaning if you run a different subnet on your network, you're going to need to download a special tool to change the settings to DHCP before you'll be able to connect to them. It's not a huge deal since you only need to do this one time, but it's yet another area where the real link got everything right. Since I plugged it in, it took DHCP directly from my router and it can be accessed immediately from Chrome. Also worth noting in this setup process is the ease of mounting and aiming each of these cameras. The real link has a ball and socket type mount that can be adjusted in any direction with just a single screw, while the other bullet style cameras have a screw for each adjustment point. This doesn't seem like a big deal from the ground, but at the top of a 25 foot ladder, it really does make a difference. The turret style cameras were all really easy to mount, but the Hick Vision stood out as the most easily adjustable in that bunch with just a single set screw to loosen and then that allowed for movement in any direction. The G3 Flex camera was extremely easy to aim, but it can only pan and tilt and the roll is constant, which I found a little bit annoying when mounting it in the corner of my garage. If audio is important for your application, you should be aware that the Hikvision, Amcrest, and HWFS cameras do not come with a microphone and therefore will not record audio. In my test, the Unify G3 had the best audio, followed by the Rio Link, then the Tuya, then the Dehua, and last the G3 Flex. So after all of my tests, here's how the scores came out. 
And the winner by far was the real link with a total score of 11.43. And that's with it finishing sixth in the field of view category, even though its field of view was much more similar to the rank one camera than to the rank seven and eight cameras. The real link comes in bullet or turret style, and it can be occasionally picked up for as low as $44. It's also the easiest to set up in Home Assistant and it's compatible with the new stream function. If you're looking for an all around great camera to use with NVR software like Blue Iris, Shinobi, or MotionEye, the real link is the clear option. But there may be other things to consider. The Tuya camera, for instance, had one of the worst scores, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Tuya products aren't really designed for a super user. If you don't want to have an always on computer running NVR software, you'll want to be able to manage your cameras via an app. Tuya is already a powerhouse in the IoT market and their camera integration is really good as well. In the Tuya app, you can review your recorded clips from the optional SD card in the camera. You can have motion events trigger automations of other Tuya products, like turning on a light bulb or a switch. And you can use the two-way audio feature to talk with the person on the other side of the camera. In this way, it's much more similar to a Ring or Nest camera with the large added benefit of being a wired ethernet connection. That being said, if you're going to be running a local NVR and not using the Tuya cloud, you should probably steer clear of this camera. In my test, the camera actually stopped working after seven days of being blocked from the Tuya cloud. At first, I wondered if it was a random hardware failure, but after power cycling it a few times with no success, I decided to temporarily remove the firewall rule that was blocking its access to the internet, and the RTSP stream instantly came back online. It's a little weird. Similarly, the Unify cameras, which have really good clarity but poor field of view and a relatively steep price tag, are not really intended to be used with standalone NVR software like Blue Iris. But instead, they work best within the Unify ecosystem, where they can be combined with the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus to gain more control and functionality via the Unify Protect NVR software. The huge upside to using the cloud key as an NVR is that it's already an always on device. So using it as an NVR allows you to offload that processing from your computer. Blue Iris is an insanely powerful NVR program and I love it, but it is relatively difficult to set up and it does consume a fair amount of resources on even a very powerful PC. Unify Protect by comparison is the easiest NVR software that I've ever used. And because it's running on dedicated hardware, it doesn't consume any resources on your PC. The downside to Unify Protect is of course that it only works with Unify cameras. And that fact isn't likely to change anytime soon. I hesitate to say this because it could be taken in a negative way, but Ubiquity is a bit like the Apple of networking gear. You'll pay a little bit more for the name, and it doesn't always play well with other devices from other manufacturers, but if you stay within their ecosystem, they produce an unrivaled end user experience. One thing I didn't cover in this video is the security of each of these camera brands. And it's a topic that's proven to be a valid concern, as companies like Hikvision have had pretty serious vulnerabilities in their firmware in the past. The reason I didn't talk about security is that I suggest that you never let any of these cameras see the internet ever. It's really the only way to ensure that your camera feeds stay private and vulnerabilities in the firmware don't compromise the rest of your network. If you're interested in how I handle the cameras on my network, check out my Ultimate Home Network series, specifically part three, where I show you how to set up VLANs and firewall rules. As always, if I missed something or I got something wrong, make sure to let me know down in the comments. Thank you to all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.